and it happened in the spring of the year at the time when kings go out to battle that david sent joab and his servant with him and all of israel and they destroyed the people of ammon and besieged rabba but david remained at jerusalem then it happened one evening that david arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house and from the roof he saw a woman bathing life is a battlefield and every child of god who wants to get to the place of destiny must learn to have a fighting spirit until you learn to become a fighter you cannot get to where god wants you to get to in life ladies and gentlemen there are a lot of christians who have stopped fighting instead of them to understand that life is not a fanfare but a warfare they have left the battle stage and they are comfortable and they are idle what unto you when the battles of life meet you and you are having fun the battles of life in the times of david the battles were physical oh but in our days the battles are not physical the battles are spiritual so the bible says that for we wrestle not against flesh and blood we rest, which means that life is wrestling. Life is a battlefield. It's a battleground. Every day we are fighting. We are fighting with demons. We are fighting with entities. We are fighting to fulfill our assignment. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. So even our walk with God is a fight. Unfortunately, there are a lot of things that takes our heart away from the fight. Oh, some people, their Bathsheba is not a physical human being. Their Bathsheba is their job. Oh, that job that has taken the place of God in your life is your Bathsheba. Oh, to some people, their Bathsheba is their is pleasure. They cannot deal, they cannot do away with pleasure. Life is all about pleasure. Life is all about fanfare for them. They don't think about anything. It's all about pleasure. It's about entertainment. So the Bible says that it was time in the springtime when it was time for war it was time for kings to go for war and david abode in jerusalem oh the battles in those days were not predicated on the exigencies of people's quest for conquest in those days you couldn't just rise up and fight people it was determined by the calendar of those days oh woe unto you when it is time for battle woe unto you when it is time for for war and you are comfortable the bible says in amos chapter 6 verse 1 the woe unto those who are comfortable in zion there are a lot of christians because of a certain level of success that god has given to them they have become so comfortable and idle. they have neglected what brought them that level of success at that time david was very successful oh he was a successful young man. He was no longer the David that we knew at the backside of the desert. At that time, David was a matured young man. He was in his 50s. David became king by the age of 30. In his 50s, he was a matured man. He was a married man with children. He had everything. He had been able to unify all the 12 tribes of Israel under one umbrella. The guy had been able to even sack the, the old enemies who stayed on the land of Israel since the time of Joshua. He was a king of kindness. He was a king who loved God. He loved God to the point that even his enemies, he did good to them. Oh, David. Not an ordinary David. The man who was described as a man after God's own heart. A man who knew how to receive scriptures from the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost breathed scriptures to David. And David wrote them in the book of Psalms. A man who had a good relationship with God. But ladies and gentlemen, when it was time for war, the Bible says that he abode in Jerusalem. Oh, there are many Christians, I have heard people say that when you get to certain levels in life, or when you get to certain levels in Christianity, or when you get to certain levels with God, there are things you don't have to do like you used to do. I've heard people say that, you see, if you're a pastor and you get to certain dimensions in God, you don't need to fast like you used to fast. I've heard people say that, well, there are times, if you're a Christian, there are times you don't need to pray like you pray because Jesus has already done everything for us on the cross. 
I've heard pastors say that if you get to certain dimensions, you shouldn't preach in a church that where two or three have gathered. Or you shouldn't preach in a weekday service. You leave it for the small boys to go. Take upon ourselves honor when we are not supposed to take up honor upon ourselves. It was battles that took David to the throne. It was, a, it was war that took David to the throne. But this time around, it was time for war. And instead of David to go and fight, David abode in Jerusalem. Listen, when you neglect your assignment, the enemy will find where for you to go. When you neglect what God has asked you to do as a pastor, when you neglect your family, when you neglect your church, when you neglect your ministry and your call, listen, idleness is the workshop of the devil. When you are a Christian and you become idle, the devil will find something for you to do. The kings were so magnanimous to each other that they will not rise up and fight you when it is no war time. It was like a boxing match. Listen, no matter how angry you are with your opponent, you can't rise up and fight them when it's not the calendar day for the boxing. But in our day, there's no calendar day for, for wrestling or fight. The devil is roaring like a lion, seeking someone whom he may devour. So as a Christian, you need to be on alert. You need to be watchful because the enemy can strike you at any point in time. You allow the blessings of God to get into your head. The enemy will have you.